pictures are everywhere and we take them all the time with cameras. But did you know cameras wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for our Muslim hero, Hassan ibn al-Haytham? Check out our Muslim Heroes and Inventors channel to find out more. Enjoy! The last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world to show how to be closer to Allah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the Hudaybiya peace agreement, Islam started to spread greatly. It was during the beginning of the seventh year of the Hijri calendar when a lot of powerful Quraysh started to accept Islam, such as Amr bin As, Khalid bin Walid, and Uthman bin Talha. Prophet Muhammad realized that it was time to spread Islam even outside of Arabia. This time, he focused the kings and the main leaders of the surrounding Arabia. The Prophet sent one letter to the Abyssinian or Ethiopian king. The letter was sealed with three words, Allah, Rasul, and Muhammad. In the letter, Muhammad talked about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet and invited King Najashi to accept the true religion of Islam. He added one sentence from Surah Imran, verse 64. He also talked about the similarities between Islam and Christianity. The prophet also warned Najashi that if he did not accept Islam, all of his people's sins would come to him. That letter was carried by Amr bin Umayyah. King Najashi was a very good Christian. After receiving the Prophet's letter, he immediately touched it with his eyes to show respect and accepted Islam by the Prophet's cousin, Jafar bin Ta'ala. After two years, the good king, Najashi, passed away in the ninth Hijri calendar. In Medina, the Prophet prayed a special funeral for Najashi. Later, the Prophet sent another letter to the next new king. But we don't know whether he accepted Islam or not. Muhammad sent another letter to Muqaykis, the king of Alexandria and Egypt. He did not accept Islam but showed great respect and sent some special gifts to the Prophet. In his gift, the king sent two women. The king saved the Prophet's letter in a very special place to show respect. Another letter was sent to the king of Persia, Kusru Parvez. The Prophet sent that letter through the ruler of Bahrain, who delivered that letter to Kusru. But the bad Persian king did not like the Prophet's letter and ripped it up. When the Prophet heard about Kusru's bad behavior, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy his kingdom. Within a few days, Kusru's own son destroyed him and became the new king with the help of the Romans. Within five years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped the Muslims to control Persia and Umar radin ta'ala became the new ruler. The Prophet sent a letter to the powerful Roman Emperor Heraclius through the ruler of Basra to accept Islam. At that time, he was in Jerusalem. After receiving the letter from the Prophet, he wanted to talk to someone who knew the Prophet. During that time, a caravan with Abu Sufyan went to Jerusalem for business. King Heraclius ordered them to meet with him. When Abu Sufyan met with the king, he 
let him sit close. He told the other Quraysh people that if Abu Sufyan told a lie, they should tell him. Then he started to ask some questions about the Prophet. Number 1. What was the Prophet's family background? Abu Sufyan told the king that the Prophet came from the very best family. Number 2. Was there anyone else who preached about Islam before him? Abu Sufyan said no. Number 3. Was there anyone in his family that used to be kings? Abu Sufyan said no. Number 4. Who accepted him as a prophet? Abu Sufyan said his followers were poor and weak. Number 5. Were his followers getting bigger? Abu Sufyan said yes. Number 6. Were Muslims leaving Islam? Abu Sufyan said no. Number 7. Did the Prophet ever tell a lie during his lifetime? Abu Sufyan said no. Number 8. Did the Prophet ever break his promises? Abu Sufyan said, Not yet, but they are in the Hudaybiyah peace agreement, so he does not know what he will do in the future. Number 9. Did they fight with him? Abu Sufyan said yes. Number 10. What was the result of the fighting? Abu Sufyan said, Sometimes the Quraysh won, and other times the Prophet won the battle. And number 11. What was the Prophet teaching? Abu Sufyan said, The Prophet asked to accept the one and only God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to reject the forefather God. The Prophet tells the people to pray and become a good, truthful, and to be a kind person. After Abu Sufyan and Heraclius had a long discussion, Heraclius was very interested in Islam. With all of the questions that he asked, Heraclius realized that Muhammad really was a prophet. That's all for today. Inshallah, in our next episode, we will learn what the Roman king Heraclius did when he returned home. The Prophet Story Have you ever wanted to make a big difference to help children all over the world? We provide everything we create for free and are committed to keeping it that way for millions of Muslims and non-Muslims all over the world. 100% of our operations are crowdfunded from our generous audience. We want to continue our Dawah mission and we can do so with your help. All donations are tax deductible and sadaqah is zaria, which continues to benefit you when you pass away from this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your generosity and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the highest reward to you and your family in this world and the hereafter.